A recent research paper entitled Workplace Wellbeing and Firm Performance shows not only the advantages of employee wellbeing investment, but also the gaps. Hello, you're listening to Well Intel Daily. I'm Annie Hood. This is the podcast that makes wellbeing work for you and your business. Yann Emmanuel Deneuve, Mika Katz, and George Ward have documented the research that I've just mentioned. They say this workplace wellbeing is being touted as a new frontier in the global competition for talent and a key ingredient to business success. But what do we really know about this relationship? Is all of this attention founded on hard evidence? Do investments in employee well-being really pay off? Would managers and executives be justified in dedicating time and energy into measuring, monitoring and promoting the happiness of their employees? Or are the costs likely to outweigh the benefits? Ultimately, is there a business case for happiness? There are two perspectives to consider and areas for measurement that need joining together. The first is at the individual employee level. Is the well-being support that your company is providing working for them? Is it improving their well-being and making them happier? That's the first thing. Second, is the investment benefiting the company performance. Now, there is instinctive belief and knowing that investing in employee wellbeing is ethically and morally the right course of action. And the evidence is mounting. However, only a third of manager and executives in the study mentioned here said that wellbeing was a strategic priority for their organisation. And further to that, only half of those so circa 16% of the whole, noted that a strategy was in place to effectively improve workplace wellbeing. This is what the research is showing. And the bottom line is that we don't yet have a robust enough measure that is able to aggregate data between the employee and the performance of the company. That's what is missing. And in order to avoid more years of knowing the right answer but not being able to concretely prove and convince CEOs and boards to invest, you and I are going to go around in circles. So it is game on for the development of that technology and to showcase a model that supplies incontrovertible evidence that no business will want to turn away from. Tomorrow, carbon offsetting is getting a bad rap. If that's been your only strategy for mitigating against net negative business practice from a carbon emissions perspective, what's your new view if you have one? Do follow, please share, give us a review and be well.